So I've got my mitts on the 1.2 patch notes which come out tomorrow. We're going to go through this fairly quickly as it is very long. I'll point out anything I see of worthy note and leave it for you to pause the video where you wish to read the rest. And we kick it off with one of the most exciting parts, the Regiment of Renown pack. This one all about the melee infantry. It's going to give every faction a brand new elite melee infantry. For Cathay you get the Dune Dragons which are Celestial Dragon Guard with magic attacks, magic resistance and they encourage nearby friendlies. For Khorne we have the Hellforged Host Exalted Bloodletters that have armor on so they're going to be much tougher than the regular ones. For Kislev, Draz's Hearthblades, these are Sargard great weapons with fire, something that the Kislev army kind of lacks. Well now they'll have these to help deal with those regenerating units. For Nurgle it's the Festering Stooges, Exalted Plague Bearers. These have regeneration and it says are able to restore their numbers which I guess means bringing models back to life. So just another tanky unit for Nurgle doesn't really fill any holes in the army though. Moving on to the Ogres you've got the Powder Guts which are just better Maneater Ogre pistols. They have more range, more accuracy and a faster fire rate. And then we have the Bringers of Beguilement, Exalted Demonettes. These have perfect vigor which makes them basically not lose any damage output throughout the battle. It's one of the strongest attributes in the game to be honest and they also cause Rampage so it makes them a bit witch elfy. And lastly for Zinch we have the Blazing Squealers which are Exalted Pink Horrors who have Warp Flame Projectiles so I guess that means they'll make things weak to fire and it'll do fire damage and whatever else the Warp Flame does. They'll also replenish ammunition of nearby friendly units which could be pretty powerful for the Zinch army. So that's all the new units. We also see at the bottom there multiplayer leaderboard reset for you multiplayer kids. That will be reset. There's been some cheaters making their way to the top so that'll all be sorted out. Hopefully it won't happen again but it probably will. Moving on though, a few game fixes to stability and performance. You can pause and read those if you wish. Nothing terribly exciting though. But now to some good stuff, mount skills auto unlock. So basically you won't have to use skill points to buy mounts anymore. As soon as you hit the required level, the mounts will unlock. So it saves us wasting Lord and Hero skill points on mounts that we're never going to use again after we've got the better one. We've also got some improvements to auto resolve, finally. Battle outcome is now determined by the battle difficulty rather than campaign difficulty and the scaling of auto resolve has been reduced on hard and higher difficulty. So auto resolve in theory should be better now and we won't have to fight so many silly battles that we don't want to fight. With any luck it'll be closer or the same as Warhammer 2 now. On to AI behavior, they'll be more likely to attack you in siege attacks so you'll have more chance of fighting siege defenses which is cool but more importantly significantly tone down the anti-player bias in the AI's target selection especially on higher difficulties so no longer will the AI just beeline and try to kill you ignoring all their other enemies literally walking through their enemies lands to get to you and kill you which doesn't really make any sense so hopefully that's been fixed now and you should have a bit more breathing room in some situations without the AI just hounding you constantly. Moving on to unit responsiveness, a lot of these to do with ranged units. Basically ranged units are going to be better at actually just lining up and starting firing. At the moment they can be a bit slow to respond and a bit slow to start firing. Now that should hopefully all be fixed. There's also a fix to flying units not being able to properly land and attack single entities as we saw in my Who's the Best Monster video the other day when a Lord of Change was trying to hump a stone horn. Hopefully we won't see that anymore. And a couple of extra things here, manual fire and general updates, nothing terribly exciting there. Pause though if you wish to read it. Moving on to factions and balance, starting with the Demons of Chaos, I'm going to let you read most of this, so spacebar to pause it. If you want to rewind the video 5 seconds or fast forward it 5 seconds, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard as well, just in case you miss a pause moment. Most of this for the Demons is just fixes though, so nothing terribly exciting. Moving down to Cathay though, it comes with a dev note talking about making improvements to Cathay. One thing is that the Crane Gunners are going to get better and be more expensive, better than the Jezails I should say. And also the Wujing Compass is going to get improvements, most notably that its spells won't cost actual Winds of Magic anymore, which is going to be pretty common with all bound spells across all factions as you'll see through the rest of this block. It also talks about the problems with Formation Attack, which won't be addressed just yet, but should be in 1.3. Moving down, we've seen some changes to the units in terms of cost and a few nerfs and buffs here and there. Crane Gunners, as mentioned, getting a lot of love there, so they should be much better now. Nothing about the Terracotta Sentinel though, which as we learned from who's the best monster the other day, is pretty damn powerful and maybe is a little bit too cheap. We'll see if that gets any changes in the future though. Everything else here I'm going to let you go through, so pause the video now if you want to read all of this. And all of this. And all of this. There's a lot of technology changes for Cathay, as you can see. Moving on to Corn, the dev note says they're mostly fine, except Skull Crushers now have gained a bonus versus large, separating them a bit from the Blood Crushers, so that's really nice. Glad that unit now has a bit more of a purpose as an anti-large, maybe Cav Killer. 
Moving down to campaign and units, a few fixes and a fair few price changes to some corn units. The Bloodthirster got cheaper. The Minotaur's got a fair bit cheaper. The Cultist of Corn, though, getting an increase, probably because his summons are pretty powerful. The Totem of Endless Bloodletting as well gives extra melee attack now, so that's going to be a nice boost to the Blood Shrine. Here's all the technology stuff. Have a browse of that if you wish. Pause it before we move on to old Kislev, which brings us to Kislev who are mostly fine, as the dev note basically says, although the sleds have needed some work, so they've messed around with those to make them a little more balanced, which was probably very much needed. Griffon Legion got a little bit of a buff. Warbear Riders got a little bit of a buff. Some of the better Patriarch abilities have become more expensive, so that's the healing and the melee attack buff and something else I can't remember. The Magic of Kislev has also got some love. Some of these ice magic spells have been a bit buffed up, which is probably needed. It is a bit of an underwhelming spellbook, so nice to see that getting some attention. Here's the tech changes if you want them. And the rest of them. Now Nurgle. The Great Unclean One's magic now doesn't cost actual winds of magic, much like the Wujing Compass. That's nice, makes those units a little more useful overall. Not a great deal of changes to Nurgle's army, a few unit price changes, but not much else. Here's the technology stuff, you know the drill, and the rest of it. And let's move on now to the Ogres, which the Death Note says they are mostly fine. Greasus getting a little bit of love, and the Giant getting a little bit of love though. Manny to Ogre Pistols, however, getting a nerf, they are too strong, they've been brought down a peg. We can see the Giant now has a plus 15% missile resistance, so that'll help it survive a little bit. Noblar's got a little more expensive in multiplayer. And that Ogre Pistol nerf is pretty heavy, taking their projectile armor-piercing damage from 96 to 68. So that's a pretty big percentage lost overall, and they got more expensive in multiplayer. So that's most of the noteworthy things to my eyes anyway. Here's the technologies, and let's move on to Slanesh now. DevNote says they're mostly happy with where the Slanesh faction is, which I guess means the chariots and stuff are fixed now. I don't know if they were last patch. I haven't really tested it, so I'm not entirely sure. Keeper of Secrets Bound spells getting the same treatment as everyone else, so won't cost Winds of Magic anymore. Should make those spells a little more useful. A few campaign fixes and changes there onto the units. Mainly buffs for Slanesh. Health Layers getting a nice little buff there. Demonettes getting a little extra melee attack. Cultists getting more expensive. Again, probably the summons. A few spell buffs there too, and the technological changes as well. Take a look at those, pause if you wish, and on to Zinch. Lord of Change getting the same change as everyone else. The Bound spell will not cost magic anymore. Screamers are getting a buff because they sucked before. And Blue Horrors in multiplayer are still super powerful, so they're talking about maybe sorting them out, but maybe not, we'll see. The only change to them this patch is that they got a little bit more expensive. We'll see if that tones down Zeech in multiplayer just a little bit. Screamers, as I said, got a little bit of a buff there, so they should be more of a useful unit now. Other than that, not a lot changing to the Zeech roster. Or to the campaign, for that matter, apart from some technology changes, which, as you can see here, there's a fair few, but not as much as some other factions. Zeech's faction overall in a pretty good spot, battle and campaign-wise. So that's all the faction stuff. On to some campaign changes. Mostly just fixes here, to be honest. Nothing terribly exciting. Pause if you wish to read through this stuff. It's nice to have the bugs fixed though. As we go, the game will get more and more stable and less buggy over time. Total War Warhammer will become great again. Just hold on. Here's some battle changes as well. Again, nothing super exciting. A few fixes. Unbreakable units no longer route when all victory points are taken and capture settlement battles, so that's good. Blah, 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 blah. Pause if you want to read. Domination mode. Getting some more adjustments. Apparently they kind of f***ed it up last time, so they're fixing it back again. And one notable change in graphics, snow maps will no longer burn out your retina with radioactive intensity. So that's good, snow maps should now be a little bit more bearable. Some of them are pretty bad, some of them are fine, but some really needed a tone downing of the white of the snow. Now that's been done. So there we go, that's the blog for patch 1.2. Hope you've enjoyed this, thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.